Hello friends, this video on potentiometer part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this idea, let us now talk about the potentiometer, its construction and its working in detail. Now before we get into the details of potentiometer, it is good to understand this term called potential gradient because potential gradient plays uh, a good role in, in, the, in understanding the working of potentiometer. So let us try to understand what is potential gradient. The word gradient means slope, right? So it is the potential drop per unit length. That means along the length, the potential keeps decreasing from one point to another. So that decrease in potential per unit length is known as potential gradient. So let us see what it is with the help of a circuit. Let us suppose we have a circuit like this. So this is a cell here. This is some resistance R. Let us consider two points, say A and B. Let us say the potential at point A is VA, potential at point B is VB. Now as the current flows, current is nothing but the flow of charges. So the current flows from, let us suppose the potential at point A is greater than the potential at point V point B. Now let us suppose the current flows. Now due to the difference in potential there is a flow of current. Now as we move from point A to point B the potential keeps decreasing. Right? So this decrease in potential along the length of this circuit is known as potential gradient. So if we plot this decrease graphically it would be somewhat like this. Let us suppose if this side we take the potential and if this side we take length. So let us suppose if this is the potential at point A and this is the potential at point B. So how will be the graph? The graph will be somewhat like this. So it keeps decreasing, right? So how do we define potential gradient? Potential gradient is nothing but the slope of this line. So this divided by this. So that is why potential gradient is expressed as V by L where V is the potential difference between two points and L is the distance between those two points. So here L is the length or the distance between A and B and potential difference between A and B is VB minus, VA minus VB. Right? So this is what is potential gradient. Now let us suppose that how can we make use of this in case of potentiometer. I mean how are we going to use potential gradient in potentiometer. Let us suppose if we have a wire of length L. So we have this wire of length L and we say that the potential gradient along this wire is rho. So what would be the potential difference of this wire between the two end points of this wire? So we know the potential gradient. We know that potential gradient is equal to potential difference divided by L. So we can say that potential difference will be equal to rho into L where rho is the potential gradient. Right? So this is how we can find out the potential difference between two points if we know the potential gradient along that circuit, right? So this is the concept of potential gradient. So with this, let us now look at the construction and working of potentiometer. So what basically is a potentiometer? How do we construct or how do we make a potentiometer? It is It consists of a long wire with uniform cross section. What is uniform cross section? That means let us suppose if you have a wire like this. So the cross section here, that means the area of this is equal to the area at this place, the area at this, the area of this. So that is called uniform cross section. Whereas if you have a wire like this, so you can see the area at this point and the area of this point are different, right? So in case of potentiometer, we have a long wire with uniform cross section. So this is how the construction of a potentiometer looks like. 
so here if you see this black colored wire this is a long wire so what is done instead of taking a very long wire which will consume a lot of space what is done that small pieces of the wire is taken and then each of the those pieces are fixed parallel to each other on a platform so if you see if this is the platform this board kind of a structure that is the platform you have taken long pieces of one two three four five six there are six wires right and how have we connected them they are joined by copper strips so here you can see this orange colored structure that is the copper strip so now you have connected maybe each of them is one meter in length now you have connected six wires in this fashion so the total length of this wire becomes six meters right so it, that is quite long so that is how we connect or we design a very long wire so it acts as a single wire of desired length so if you want to uh, the length of the wire to be say 10 meters so instead of the six wires you take 10 pieces and then connect them by copper strips so that will act as a wire of 10 meters length right okay so this Next, we have a driving circuit, which will consist of a battery, a key and a rheostat. So, which is the driving circuit here? So, this circuit in brown represents the driving circuit where we have this battery. This is the positive. This is the negative. We have a key here. This is the key and we have a rheostat. So, what is rheostat? Rheostat is nothing but uh, a variable resistance. So, this is how we represent a variable resistance. Right? So, this is the driving circuit. Why is it known as driving circuit? Because this is the circuit which is, which is going to send current through the wire. So, who will provide driving means something which actually drives the entire process so here the entire functioning will be driven by this circuit because this circuit has got the battery which will actually provide the current which will flow through this long wire right now let us call these points let us call this point as point a let us call this point as point b right okay so driving circuit is the next portion Third is a galvanometer. So here you can see we have a galvanometer connected. So one end of the galvanometer is free whereas the other end is connected to a point on AB on this circuit on this uh, long wire AB. So AB is the long wire right. So the galvanometer's one end is free and the other end is connected to this AB. How is it connected? If you look at it, it is connected with the help of a jockey. So here something in pink that represents nothing but the jockey. So what is a jockey? Jockey is actually capable of moving from one place to another. So you can just slide the jockey from one point to another to note the deflection of the, on the galvanometer. So jockey is capable of sliding on the wire, right? So that is how the galvanometer is connected to this wire. And then we have the terminals of the potential. So this is basically the construction of this instrument. Other than that, we also have a graduated scale here in order to measure them for the measurement purposes. So here we have that scale. Then we have the end points of the potentiometer. That means like when you want to measure the potential difference between two points in a circuit. So where will you connect those two points? To the potentiometer so these are the two ends which should be connected to the two points between which the potential difference needs to be measured so which are the terminals so the free end of the galvanometer acts as one end point and this wire i mean this end a of the circuit acts as the other end point so these two are the two end points or the two terminals of the potentiometer now we assume that this it is connected in such a way that end A is at higher potential and end B is at lower potential. So here you can see higher potential connected to positive terminal of battery. So A is at higher potential. So which, which terminals will actually act as the end points of potentiometer? The high potential end of the long wire and the free end of the galvanometer. So now whenever you want to measure the potential difference between two points, you have to connect that to these two terminals of the potentiometer right so you understand the construction of the potentiometer how is it constructed it has a driving circuit it has a long wire and 
then it has the two terminals between which the um, the circuit needs to be connected where we want to measure the potential difference thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again